Craig Miller, thank you very much for joining us on the Outer East Football Netball Show today. We're going to take you through a few questions, first of all. And uh, we talk about two Ps in the pod. Uh, you guys are the pinnacle of that, saying that uh, you're both the Mount Evelyn's team of the decade. Kate is coach, Keller, you're listed as wing attack. Both involved at Warnden after Mount Evelyn. You were both at the Roval Sports Academy. Kate, you were the director of netball coaching. Ella, you were the assistant coach. Uh, you were both previously at Collingwood Magpies. Kate, you were the assistant coach. Ella, once again, you were playing. Uh, both previously a part of the Victoria Fury with Kate as coach again, Ella as the player and MVP in the year 2016. Uh, now you're both also part of the Northeast players with Ella, a life member, playing in the championship team and coaching under 23 side. Kate, you're also the head coach of the championship team. How are you both finding the championship team season so far? You, I was going to say you can answer it from a play perspective first. Oh, yeah. I think we've definitely had the best start to the season that we've had in quite a long time. And I think it, um, we've got a mix of youth and a mix of um, fossils, we like to call them. Um, but I think that that mix of experience and youth is really good for us. And just the connections that we have off the court too, we've worked really hard in building those. And I think that that's probably been the difference this year, um, can, making those connections off the court before we bring them onto the court. And then obviously having Kate back full time as well. We haven't really had her around as much because of her Collingwood commitment. So this year, having her around um, as a little bit cons- more consistently, um, I think has been a real key in our uh, success in that. Kate, you said the focus for your players this season is the ability to perform under pressure and fatigue. How do you think this is going so far? It's probably actually much much better than I thought it would. That's one thing that we really did struggle in those pressure moments is the decision making. And that's when we would potentially last year lose some close games by one, two or three. Um, so for us, it was a big focus on knowing what to do in those moments and knowing what our role was in those moments. And I feel like the majority of the games that have been close, we've come away with it. We've lost a couple of games, but I don't think that that's due to the pressure. That's probably more our decision making on problem solving. Yeah. Uh, Ella, how was the under 23 season going so far? Yeah, good. I think we went out, came off to a flying start. We had a really good start to the season, really great connections. We had, obviously, it was a pretty much a brand new team with the um, change in Netball Victoria's structure with our 23s. So I think the inclusion of some really new people with the existing players that we already had at the club, I think that we had a really great start. We had a little bit of a rough patch through the middle, but we had a few injuries, a few out-of-state commitments and things like that. So I think we lost maybe four in a row. But um, last week we had our first win again, and I think that we're really starting to find our feet again, and it's all about peaking at the right time, which I think that we will. What's kept the two of you uh, in the game for so long? I think it's a bit cliche, but probably friendships. Yeah. I think that um, you, there's a huge journey and you can go on lots of different journeys, lots of different paths in netball, but I just think it's the people that you meet. I don't ever really remember specifics about games, about how much we lost a game by or whatever happened. I just remember the funny things that happened or the friendships that you make and the connections and the people that you see 10 years later and reconnect with them. And I think it's about that for me. I think, yeah, I think it's how an environment makes you feel. And I think we're really privileged to be able to have Blaze as one of our main environments. It's been consistent in our in our life. And, um, yeah, I think walking in there, you know, it's a safe environment. You know that you can actually go there and be free of, you know, whatever challenges you might have in life um, and then go and play netball and be around people that you want to be around. So for me, it's probably the connection piece. Um, also, from a coaching perspective, being able to watch, like, you know, the likes of Ella, there's quite a few girls that I've had from such a young age, watching them grow and develop, not only just in netball, but in life is quite rewarding. So I think that keeps you going. You both worked extremely hard in a range of opportunities. Uh, do you think you could pinpoint what's been the highlight of both of your careers so far? Yeah, that's a hard one. Again, like I probably think that people think about the individual accolades, but for me it was probably 2016 when we won Blaze Premiership. That was a huge one. Um, obviously the individual one, was it 17? Yeah, 2017. Obviously the individual ones are great too, but I don't really remember any of those. I wouldn't remember the dates. I wouldn't remember anything like that. And probably footy netball has been yeah. one of the highlights. Obviously we were at Mount Evelyn together and at Wandon and those times were not, you didn't realise it in the moment, but when you look back there, that was the time of our lives. Like that was, we had the most fun, we were playing great netball and we still have connections from those years. I've probably got four premiership moments and then two other moments that I really feel have kind of stuck with me as 
how they made you feel in that actual moment. The four premierships, the first one was Matt Evelyn, and then we went Blaze, and then I've had two ANC premierships where probably against the odds. So for me, and, and ones that we never really spoke about winning, and it was just one of those ones that you went through the process and you built a really great ended team. And the other moments were games that we were up against it where we had to win, like Collingwood, I think 2019, round four, oh, it wasn't round 14 because there's not that many rounds, was it? Yeah, round 14. And um, we had to beat Vixers. They had bonus points at that time for each quarter that you won. And then we had to beat them by so many points and then we had to win each quarter and that was to get into finals. That was probably one of the most epic ones I've ever been a part of. And then COVID came and then we had the same scenario in 2022, I reckon it might have been. So, and then we had to win or lose by only two. And it was the greatest loss I've ever had in my life <laughs> because we lost by two. And then we made, made the finals again. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, apart from that, what are some of the things you'd like to still be able to achieve in the future? I'd like to pass on the legacy, which I feel like, you know, we've started with a lot of players that are still in our environment. I'd pass on the legacy that it's actually about creating a really good environment that everyone wants to be in and growth and development, not ego, growth and development. Yeah, I'd probably go on from that. I think that that's... A really important one and it's probably seeing the players now branching into their coaching ventures yeah. and seeing them sort of start to create environments that sort of we have created at players I think that's really cool. Uh, Elle, I'd like to go through some of the players who are currently on your list and just get some of your thoughts on them so firstly from London uh, Maddie George who's the Blaze under 23 captain. Yeah I think Maddie's a good story about her she started at London as a mm junior and she's gone up the ranks and she's certainly um unorthodox but she just works really hard i think that she's someone that you want on your player because on your team because she's the type of player that will give it her all until the final whistle she never gives up she doesn't have an ego she doesn't have an attitude she just goes about her business she understands our game plan to a t if she doesn't she's asking questions she's bringing other people along for the ride she's honestly like the best teammate I think. And she's a great clutch moment player. Yeah. If you need to win ball, you definitely want money on your court. Yeah. Ali Langdon from Warburton Millgrove. Yeah, I think another one that sort of flew under the radar for a little bit. Yeah. Just um, came through the juniors um, playing at Pink's Reserve and then obviously has played at Warburton as well and she's a key player for them. But for us, she's probably a like a deceiving key player. Like she's weak play her in goalkeeper against a tall because she has really great body position. But we also played her in win defence on last Wednesday as a shutdown role and she did incredibly. Yeah. She has she's really athletic. She again understands the game plan. She attacks really well, which is hard for defenders. And you don't often have a, a long defenders that attack very well. But she carries the ball well. She's definitely a silent assassin. She doesn't say a lot. Um, but she is definitely one that you want to have on your team as well. And probably one that doesn't really realise her own potential yeah. on the court. Yeah. Montana Wallace from Mount Evelyn. Yeah, Tana. <laughs> she um, is super strong, super fit. The balls that she takes um, and gets knocks in the air uh, are just insane. I think that she had a slower start to the year. She came off the Japan holiday, which yes. I don't think served her well, but she definitely has warmed up into it and she's really... Um, yeah, taking it to every opponent. She's playing across all three mid-court positions. We can kind of throw her anywhere. And she's another one. She doesn't really have an ego. She's pretty quiet. She just goes about her business. But she's really strong and I definitely wouldn't want to come up against her. No, and she was a training partner last year, I think, and then slotted into the yeah. team. And we probably didn't realise her full potential until we put her out there in centre. And she's come leaps and bounds in probably the last 18 months of making sure that we've got someone consistent on the court running long lines. Yeah. And lastly, Eliza Molino from Pakenham. Yeah, I think we can talk about Eliza. Yeah, Eliza's very exciting. So her netball's kind of flourished in the last two years and we now have a TID athlete for the Aussie uh, under-19s and she's a bottom major as well. So she's a player that's um, obviously at Pakenham and has come through the Victorian pathway and has also been TID through Australia, um, VIS, and we have the privilege of now having her at Blaze. Had a short stick with lies at Rogel Sports Academy as well. And she's pretty much a player that we want to look to for future 
uh, growth and development to play for our country. And all these players uh, we see as a massive community partner of our race for 2024 um, for our competition to grow and continue uh, development for our netball program. Why do you guys think it's important for these uh, programs to uh, help our grassroots competitions? Oh, it's so important to make sure that we have that connection. One, because that's where it all starts. That's where we all come from. So we don't want to actually forget about where we've come from and we don't want to um, forget about giving back to that as well. I think that keeps us quite humble in the process. I think the other one is to, to give every player the opportunity to see what the pathway looks like and the connection with the pathway from Outer East to a VNL club. And I think once you can actually see it, it's, it, makes, it becomes realistic for them. And to be able to see and hear about um, experiences that and people that have come from Outer East and moved into the VNL, um, and then also the ones that are giving back. That's something that we love doing is making sure that we give back in whatever capacity, whether it's a full season or whether it's just, you know, snippets here and there or giving back to coaches and players. So I think the connection piece is really good in a pathway so that those that want to can actually see what, it, what it's there for. We like to think that we make a big focus on the volunteers, mentors, coaches, committee members, all those kind of people in sporting clubs. Is there any one that you two can think of or a couple of people you two can think of that were a massive help in your journey along the way? Um, who was a massive help in your journey along the way? I think, I just can't think off the top of my head. Um, no, I think <laughs> obviously lots of people have been important in my journey yes. I think obviously it starts as your parents like they're really significant in that but then it branches out into other people obviously my first taste of kind of senior netball was at the Manavillan Football Netball Club and that was um being with Jade Hotties, Heinrich but Lauren Tezzer and I think yeah. that she was huge and she still is huge in the netball space in the footy netball space she in just like the whole community in the outer east community but the manageable community she goes above and beyond she will do anything for you um she was definitely a significant person for me and then once i met kate kate's been huge in that too and um yeah i don't think that i would be the person that i am today let alone the netball that i am today if i hadn't met kate so and it was a really big decision for me to go to manageable and i wasn't sure about it and then when i went obviously that then pushed me into interleague and then I moved to London and that's all the connection of Lauren, Kate, like, and then it just progresses from there. So I think that though they're definitely two people that have been huge in my netball journey and who I've really appreciated in that space. Yeah, and I think when you look outside of that and we look into probably more our pathway and who we probably respect and admire and um, learnt a lot from would be Cathy Fellows, yeah, um, who's at Adelaide Thunderbirds as an assistant coach and has been for probably about six or seven years now. Um, we had the privilege of having her through Fury Flames, yeah. um, which is the underpinning um, Victorian program, so the Vixens. Um, and then someone like Neil Woolmeyer, who's at our club um, and who just gives back so much to our netball community and literally does the hard yards for us. It's people like that that I think we sometimes take for granted but then realise how important they are in helping our day-to-day -day functioning as coaches and players. A lot of coaches are different. Um, I think everyone goes about it in a different way. Would there be any kind of, is there any sort of philosophy that you two follow or any just kind of style that you like <laughs> to try and implement when it comes to coaching? Okay. We've changed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've definitely changed. And, well, Kate presented at school about this the other day. Yeah, well, ours is probably more a holistic approach now. I think with the change in um, how accessible things are in our society now for our kids and how challenging it can be just to be a teenager and, and grow into a happy and healthy adult, I think it's really important to make sure that we have that holistic approach of making sure that we've got high expectations but also, too, we've got a lot of empathy and care for our athletes. So we've taken the big approach um, and together we work quite well with that. And I think when you actually find something you can work well with, it's easy to, to do that. One can be like, you know, the, I don't like it, the good cop, bad cop, because it's probably not like that. But, you know, one can actually be a little bit harder and the other one can give a little bit of love. Um, so for us, it's about making sure that we've got really happy and healthy athletes and then we flick into what the expectation is of those athletes. Do you want to add anything to that? Um, yeah. Okay. And uh, 
<laughs> Lastly, what would your advice be for anyone in the kind of outer east community who wants to try and get into netball and maybe make a career out of it? Foundation. Yeah, I think that. Yeah. Um, fundamentals. Fundamentals, basic skills, the foundations of netball are really overlooked at the moment with in particular our juniors. So we get a lot of juniors that come and they want to do all the flashy stuff and they want to run on, run on with the ball and all those sort of things. But even at your Collingwood level, like your Vixens, your Mavericks, like they're all doing basic fundamental skills at Blaze. We do basic fundamentals. The ones that progress are normally those ones that can execute the fundamentals every single time. So then when it gets to a game and you're under pressure, there's no doubt that you can execute those things. And I think that it's maybe a bit boring for some coaches or for some players, but that's the beauty of being a coach. You get to find different ways of how to um, teach that and get that across and make it interesting for your players. But that's the absolute like most important thing. And I think attitude comes into that as well. I think how you present and how you bring someone along for the ride instead of actually just being an individual, focusing on yourself and your own game and sometimes your ego can be challenged in that. I think that, you know, we look for body language, we look for someone who's actually making sure that they're encouraging their teammates, that they're actually, whether the circumstances are quite challenging or not, you know, sometimes it can be hard either way, whether you're winning by heaps or losing by heaps. So making sure that you're bringing someone into delivering that game plan and bringing someone in to be able to, you know, play out that game. Because at the end of the day, it's a team sport and you're only going to be as good as the person next to you. So why not make them look good? You make them look good, they'll make you look good. Your team's That's successful. the biggest point. I think we forget that by you making somebody else look good, you look good. Well, thank you very much, Kate Nell. We really appreciate you coming on the show today and uh, some great insights there into the North East Blaze and all the fundamentals and uh, the important parts of the game of netball. So thank you very much for joining us today. Thanks, Thank you.